Hey everybody, today we're going to be checking out Google's latest Doodle, which is a Bach reharmonization engine. So Google has this team called Magenta, and Magenta apparently is working on different ways of applying machine learning to the artistic process, whether in the visual arts or, in this case, in music. Now for this Doodle, Magenta developed a machine learning model called CocoNet which apparently can take something like a melody and then find the salient musical aspects of that melody and kind of blow it out into harmony in the style of Bach. Now the way that they trained this model to do that is kind of interesting. They took Bach's chorales and deleted notes at random from them, then trained the model and all this data to fill in the missing parts. I don't pretend to know how or why this works, but let's see it in action and analyze the results that it gives us. So let's first test this out on a simple melody. I'm not just gonna write out something you know, super simple and diatonic to the key of C major. You know, something that maybe nobody has ever heard before. Certainly nothing that has any sort of copyright protection because that would just be very bad to include in this video and it might get demonetized. So let's just click harmonize and see what happens. So a couple of things jump out here. The harmony works technically sometimes, but it's not necessarily what I would use to harmonize this particular melody. As far as I can tell, the AI saw the note G and harmonized it with a G chord. That's actually a fairly logical understanding of what's happening in the harmony here. What's really peculiar about the next moment is we have parallel octaves in between the outer voices. The soprano voice is the G going down to an E, and so is the bass voice, a G going down to an E. And in common practice, that's a big no-no. The harmonization for the second beat is also rather strange, going to an E minor chord, the three minor chord, that's not typically used in this way. And what's even stranger is by the second beat, we get to a big old F sharp half diminished chord. I'm not really quite sure what the justification of, of that is, but it never resolves to where it might want to resolve, which in this case might be a B7 chord, or maybe even a G chord if you're looking at the voice leading. It kind of resolves to that sort of G dominant sound and the upper voices with this D and this B here on the third beat. But for whatever reason, there is no harmonization in the bass or the tenor voice. Very strange. The rest of this, I think, sounds a lot clearer in terms of the direction of the harmony. Like we got this nice D minor chord followed by a couple of non chord tones on the off beat and then coming to a very clear C chord on beat two. And then we get this really nice descending bass line up against the melody. It, it sounds super clear, but then like the final beat is like a little bit unclear, like we're supposed to be cadencing and then it just gives us a random like F in first inversion, like the four in first inversion. Why would you end on that chord? It's a little strange. I guess it's like thinking like I need to get back to the beginning of this phrase and I guess the four chord in first inversion going to the five chord at the beginning of the phrase does kind of like create a nice loop. So I think that's what the machine was thinking about. Let's try another harmonization. I'm just gonna click this and... Okay, <laughs> so it starts on the same kind of idea as the last one, where we're kind of starting on a dominant sound, in this case a five chord in second inversion where the fifth is on the bottom, which technically in the common practice represents a dissonance, but the dissonance is kind of resolved downward, it's fine. And then here, it's like the E minor on the second beat, it's a very similar kind of idea here. We start on a five and then go to the three minor for some reason. Then by the third beat, we have this G sharp in the bass. The G sharp is gonna tonicize eventually the sixth degree of the scale. The G sharp to me means like an E7 chord or an E chord in first inversion. And we don't really get it though. We don't get the resolution of this G sharp the same way that we didn't get the resolution of the F sharp in the last harmonization. I don't know really what that means in terms of the machine learning model because the harmony, I guess, has the same sort of pattern in this harmonization. We start on the five, then we go to like the three for some reason, and then we go to some kind of like non-diatonic chord. Also, this one interval between the G sharp and the C, that's a diminished fourth. That's a really really spicy interval and that really doesn't get resolved like the G sharp doesn't resolve upwards and the C doesn't really resolve downwards either so this is really probably not something that you would ever see in the music of Bach and that's fine but the thing that's 
really strange, and you probably noticed this too, is these A sharps and these A like A naturals. I have no idea what these are doing here. Like the note A sharp should never really show up in any kind of piece of music in C, if you're talking about music from the common practice. Maybe this is just a spelling error on the part of the machine, because you would see the note B flat in the key of C. B flat would typically be part of the C7 chord, which is the secondary dominant to the four chord F. B flat would resolve naturally down to A natural, and in this case, both of these weird A sharps resolve down to A natural. So that's my best guess. I think the machine just doesn't know how to spell correctly, which, you know, it's learning. We'll, we'll, we'll give it some slack. Let's try one more harmonization. All right, so I think this one's the most successful so far, although there's still some problems. It does start on a five chord, like the other harmonizations have. In this case, it's a five, seven over its seventh. But then we have like these direct octaves where two voices are going to octaves in the same direction. That's considered a no-no in classical counterpoint, although it's not as bad as parallel octaves. But then we get to this nice second beat. And the second beat is great because the five chord resolves properly to the one chord, five, seven going to one. Now we get this B natural and D resolving very nicely to a C. And then we got a C going up to an F here. And this F right here, it's harmonized beautifully with this beautiful spread voicing of an F major triad in first inversion with that third in the bass, the A down here. To me, that like, sounds a lot more like musical. This is the moment where I would use that particular chord. Not that what I would do is what Bach would do, but I'm saying this is probably what a human trained musician would definitely kind of gravitate towards at that moment. What's a little strange though, and I think this is smart on the part of the AI, is that there are a lot of pieces missing from the tenor part and the bass part and also the alto part. And there were pieces missing from earlier harmonizations, but it's especially noticeable here. I think it makes it sound better, better to not play anything if you're not sure of what to play. This is a very wise harmonization on the part of the AI. They opted not to play because they didn't know what to play. But at the end of the day, I'm impressed with these harmonizations, but you're not really gonna fool anybody into thinking that this is actually Bach. It's really fascinating reading the blog for CocoNet, the model that has been generating all this stuff. It seems like Magenta is developing these models more as a compositional tool for musicians and composers, rather than as a means of kind of, you know, automating the process and removing the human element from it altogether. Automation, of course, looms very large across many industries right now. Not that there are that many jobs writing Bach chorales that will be replaced by this AI anytime soon. But the threat of musicians being taken over by the machines has actually loomed large across the music industry for many, many decades now. Just check out this clip from the 1990s of great session bass player Anthony Jackson warning about the grave dangers that computer music had to musicians all across the world. The machines are here. You mean they've got bass, not only drum machines, but they got bass? They were the first, sure. It has affected everyone from the very top on down, more or less. My feeling is I'll outplay anybody using the machine or I'll die. I don't care. I, the day that the machine outplays me, they can plant me in the yard with the corn. Uh, and I mean it. Of course, the demand for high-end session musicians definitely has declined since then, but the explosion of musical expression and the explosion of musical ability since then, I think has kind of more than made up for it. So the MIDI sequencing that he was so worried about back then didn't end up killing music. So I don't see this AI thing, even though this is clearly in its infant stages, replacing musicians anytime soon, but I do see it potentially over the next five to 10 years as a really powerful tool. With that in mind, let's harmonize one final melody. You knew this was coming, right? Oh, you tried so hard, AI. You tried so hard. Uh, I, <laughs> I, uh, it's just brilliant, brilliant. I, I developed a masterpiece. This is the single greatest harmonization of the lick I have ever seen in my entire life. Thank you, Bach Doodle. Thank you, 
to everybody over at Magenta. You have succeeded in creating uh, mankind's greatest greatest achievement here by harmonizing the lick like so. <laughs> ah, there's a lot to unpack here, but um, I'm going to let the music stand for itself because I think it really speaks for itself. So thank you, everybody, for watching. And until next time, bah. <laughs>